Thank you very much, Ashley, and I'd just like to say thank you to the organisers for inviting us along here today. I found it fantastically useful already. Um, I've met lots of people who I'm inviting along to our research workshop. I've heard lots of really good ideas, which I'd like to take away from today, but also to encourage you to work more closely with us going forward, and hopefully I'm going to give you some ideas of what that might look like. So, a little bit about Cancer Research UK. We are the largest fundraising medical research charity in the world, and I think that's an important point to make. So, we don't receive any money from the government. We raise all of our money through public donation, through our shops, through people leaving us money in their wills, for example. And we are the largest funder of cancer research in Europe. We spend approximately £350 million a year on research, and the money we raise is spent directly on research, so the research that goes on in laboratories, clinical trials, some of the epidemiology, the data studies that we heard about earlier today, but also on providing information about cancer to the general public, both to those who actually have cancer themselves, or for those who are affected by that, their families, their carers, for example. And also, we have an increasingly important role to play in advocacy and public policy. It's no good developing the best treatments in the world if they don't make it into clinical care. We have an important role to play alongside the NHS and alongside governments to try and influence them to do the best for cancer patients. And I should point out, actually it came up earlier on, the Cancer Task Force is actually independent of CRUK, so our Chief Executive has been asked to lead it, but I should just say up front that that task force is separate to us, which means that we can say whatever we want when it comes to advocacy and public policy, so it's quite a good position to be in. Where do we fund? Um, so thanks to our supporters, we fund over 4,000 uh, researchers, nurses and doctors across the UK, and you can see on this map how that sort of spreads out. We support five core funded institutes who tend to each have a particular focus on a type of cancer research, and we uh, fund eight core funded clinical trials units. And you heard very eloquently from Pam this morning about the key role that that CRUK core funded unit plays in the coordination and delivery of childhood trials in this country. So what we fund. The one thing I can guarantee you about this slide is that no matter what audience I put it up in front of, they won't be happy. Um, so this is a breakdown approximately of how that 351 million is spent. I should say up front, we do not ring fence money traditionally uh, towards a certain cancer type. So how we spend our money is driven by what comes through the door and what our scientific committees tell us is of the highest quality. Now I'm going to tell you about a few changes to that in a few minutes, but basically that's how we spend the money. So you can see the largest amount of money currently goes towards breast cancer followed by cervical cancer, bowel, etc. 18 million is spent on leukemia. Now that is classified as leukemia. Some of that research will be childhood specific. Some of it will be applicable to both childhood and adult. Um, so that's a basic breakdown. Important to note, we fund research into all types of cancer, so we are not tumour specific in what we fund. And we fund research right across the pathway from the laboratory through to the clinic and out to long term population level studies. And I mentioned earlier on about our role in information and influencing public policy. I'm sure you'll all be familiar with the recent campaign around plain packaging, for example, on cigarettes. We're also lobbying hard on um, banning sunbed use in under 18. So there's some of the examples of the type of work that we do through our advocacy and public policy. Last year, we published our new research strategy, um, and it basically boils down to one thing. We want to double the rate of progress in survival. So back in the 1970s, approximately one in four people would survive their cancer. In 2010, that's two in four, that's 40 years later. 20 years from now, we want to see three in four people survive their cancer, so we want to double the speed of progress. And basically, in, our nutshell, in a nutshell, our new strategy is all about that. It's about increasing survival and it's about acceleration of progress towards that aim. How are we going to do it? Well, we're certainly going to do it in partnership. Um, what we intend to do as an organisation and what we see our role in that being is to substantially increase our spend across a number of areas. 
They include things like early diagnosis, cancers of substantial unmet need, and by that I mean where survival remains poor. The basic biology, actually understanding the cancer so that we can effectively target drugs towards it. Prevention, therapeutic innovation, you heard earlier on about novel combinations, for example, of drugs, or combining different types of therapy, such as radiation with chemotherapy. And also about precision medicine, so really trying to understand the genome, what David was talking about earlier on, trying to understand cancer at an individual patient level. To help deliver on these priorities, we have launched and are launching a number of new funding schemes, which I'll give you a little flavor of this afternoon. We're investing heavily in our translational work, and by that we mean the link between the biology, the laboratory-based research, and the clinical care, and trying to do everything we can to speed up that translational cycle. We are encouraging collaborative approaches, not just between our researchers, but between funding organizations. And we want to develop the best researchers. We currently fund some of the best researchers in the world. We want to make sure that the rising stars are supported and that there is adequate funding out there for those people who might have those high-risk innovative ideas, which traditionally they wouldn't have thought of CRUK as a funder for. I should point out that I've been struck today that I think just about every single one of those priority areas applies to childhood cancer. And we, on top of this, we have a number of strategic priority areas of which childhood and teen cancers are one. So how do we fund research? I mentioned we do not commission research. So do, we do not go out as a funder and say, we specifically want you to do research on X. We are driven by the ideas that come from the research community. What we do have is a number of response mode funding committees. And again, what I mean there, response mode, we respond to the ideas that come through the door. Researchers apply to us with their ideas. We send them out for review to members of the scientific community um, who give us their expert opinions. We also send them out to the clinical study groups, which uh, Julia was explaining to you just now. The relevant committee will then meet to consider that application. They'll take into account the external review comments, the view of the clinical studies groups, and they will make a recommendation to CRUK about whether or not they think that study should be funded, and that will broadly be based on the scientific quality of the study and the scientific priority to Cancer Research UK's research strategy. We have public and patient involvement. Um, public and patient involvement exists on the clinical study groups. So for example, on the Childhood st Clinical Study Group and the TYA Clinical Study Group, there are two consumers there. We also have patient representatives on a number of our funding committees at Cancer Research UK who are fully scoring, fully voting members of that committee, treated exactly the same as the scientific and clinical members. So they are directly involved in the decision making for our clinical trials committee and for our population research committee. This is our funding committee structure. At the top sits our scientific executive board who take that final ratification step for all of our decisions. And underneath we have a number of response mode funding committees. Basically this is just to illustrate the point to you that we do fund right across the spectrum um, of cancer. We've recently launched a number of new funding schemes, um, and this takes us into sort of non-traditional territory for Cancer Research UK. I shouldn't really say this, but what I've heard from the community is we're seen as quite a traditional funder, we're seen as quite conservative, um, and people have a preconceived idea sometimes as to what sort of research Cancer Research UK might want to see. I hope these new funding schemes are going to send a very strong message about the sorts of research we would like to see going forward, and they may not be the ones the scientific community necessarily thought. So we have a new thing called a Programme Foundation Award. This is really about supporting those rising stars, those early career researchers who are perhaps not quite at a group leader level or not quite at professor level, but have some really good ideas. This is about trying to support them at that step in their clinical or scientific careers so we don't lose them to other disciplines. A multidisciplinary award. This is targeted specifically at bringing different disciplines together. We've had a lot of questions today about data, big data. Big data is here. How do we use it? How do we actually get knowledge and information out of that data? We're going to need to work with engineers. We're possibly going to have to work with physicists. Traditional disciplines who haven't necessarily come to CRUK for funding. We want to actively target these communities and bring them together with the scientific and clinical communities to work up some of these ideas. 
We have a specific immunology award. This is an area of science which is showing a lot of promise. Ironically, 20 years ago, it was sort of, you know, parked as not being the bright new idea. But this is something we particularly want to drive interest in. I mentioned we don't commission research, but what we we'll want to do now is we want to take a much more proactive role in working with our research community to try and drive up high quality research in some of these key areas. I mentioned we have a number of institutes, clinical trials units, we also have a number of centres, and we want to put um, extra investment into those centres whereby they can work together on certain ideas where they can really accelerate progress by working collaboratively. There's more to come, and one which I think is fantastically exciting and pretty unique is something called the Grand Challenge. There have been a number of workshops held about this. What we want to do is we want to offer £20 million to research groups to solve the really big questions in cancer. What we're doing at the moment is we are consulting broadly um, around what are those really big questions in cancer. Where can we have transformative change? £20 million, five years to work on these questions. Some ideas that we've seen so far, why do people continue to adopt behaviours they know call cancer? Drugging the undruggable, some of the particular targets that we know are very, very difficult to target with drugs, how can we make progress on those? I would suggest to you, kids and teens cancer may be something that the community want to start thinking about as working up into a grand challenge. We also have started to work collaboratively with colleagues in the United States around the Stand Up to Cancer initiative, funding transatlantic dream teams, as they're called, to work on particularly challenging aspects, and also pioneer awards where we really want to fund innovative, high-risk research. We want people to come to us with those ideas that are an early stage that may fail. We really want to see the best ideas come through the door. So, specifically, CRUK and childhood cancer. Currently, we spend about £6.7 million a year on child and teen-specific cancer, and by that I'm uh, going up from ages 0 to 24. We are currently the largest funder of research into childhood cancer in the UK, but it's important to point out that we already work in partnership, and we see a growing role for us to work in partnership with people going forward. Examples of current partnerships would be working with the Teenage Cancer Trust about lobbying for access for teenagers to clinical trials. Our clinical trials committee was one of the first to actively question age eligibility criteria for trials. Unless there is a scientific or a clinical rationale, for the age criteria given, our committee will actively go back and challenge that. We've been working with TCT on lobbying, particularly in the Scottish Parliament, about doing everything we can to ensure that that group is not disadvantaged around access to trials. And we also work very actively with the Brain Tumour Charity to actually co-fund clinical trials. And earlier this year, we launched something uh, called Cancer Research UK Kids and Teens. So CR UK Kids and Teens is a new sub-brand. It is the first time that Cancer Research UK has ever created a sub-brand. Um, the idea around this is we want to specifically drive up activity and spend in the area of kids and teens cancer. So what we've done around that is we had a launch in Downing Street uh, earlier this year, which was hosted by Samantha Cameron. And we are working up now, we are contacting existing supporters, we are going out through social media, um, and we are actively engaging with a number of patient and carer groups. So for example, the My Child Has Cancer group we met recently with in Edinburgh. We've been hosting a number of patient engagement events. We want to hear about what the research priorities are in the areas of kids and teens cancer and how we as a funder can work with you on those. So what have we done? Um, so one of the main things that we've done is recently we have secured um, an international recruitment to lead our CRUK core funded uh, cancer centre in Cambridge. And the little person smiling on the right there floating is uh, Professor Richard Gilbertson. So Richard Gilbertson is joining us from St. Jude's in the United States, a world leading um, childhood hospital. And Richard is not just going to bring his individual research lab, which is focused on childhood brain cancers, to Cambridge, but he's going to lead the entire Cambridge Centre. We hope this is going to send a strong message. CRUK is serious about childhood cancer. We want Richard to bring his networks. We want him to help drive strategy around this area in the United Kingdom. We've also convened a steering group um, of experts from across the research community to work with us to organize a workshop on the 19th of June. 
The whole idea behind that workshop is for us to catalyze research ideas among the research community and to get them working together on some of those ideas. We want ideas that have the potential to have transformative change on survival in the area of kids and teens. Um, and as I mentioned, that workshop is taking place next month. And also, we're starting to think more internationally about how we can support research. I was struck earlier today about the Imagine for Margot talk from Patricia about how effective um, some European organisations are already being. How can we partner up with those organisations? How can we potentially work more effectively with other funders of cancer research in Europe? We're currently involved in something called ERKI, which is the International Rare Cancers Initiative. Now, that's not childhood focused, but that is an example of funders from Europe, the US and the UK working together to try and streamline processes and funding decisions around trials. Can we take that model and apply it in kids and teens cancer to try and remove some of the burdens on our researchers about actually getting these studies up and running? So what's coming next? Um, so we want to play a very active role in raising awareness around childhood cancer. And in September, we have a big PR launch planned around Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. <coughs> Excuse me. We have a corporate partnership with TK Maxx. Um, we will have CR UK Kids and Teens Little Star Awards, which will um, be branded around this. And TK Maxx have agreed to work with us around the sales of gold ribbons, both in TK Maxx and through our um, charity shops, uh, to work on raising awareness. We're also going to organize a number of engagement events, something at the moment which is called Slide on Cancer, which I don't know the specific details, but basically you sign up to slide down a huge inflatable somewhere in the United Kingdom. The point about this is it's a fundraising effort, but it's also an effort on our part to try and raise awareness of kids and teens cancer. Uh, we will have kids and teens merchandise uniquely branded in our shops, and we will also be putting a lot of activity into fundraising and awareness raising in this area. So that was a whistle-stop tour um, around CRUK's involvement in this area, and I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you.